All right, so this week we're going to keep going with CSS and we're going to last time we were talking a lot about text layout and how to make a document. And this week we're going to we're going to add to that and we're going to focus on how do you do the layout of your elements in a page? How do I have a header across the top? How do I lay things out so they're beside each other, put them in grids? How do how do I do some of these complex layouts? So in the, the notes this week, which I would encourage you to begin with, I'm going to assume that you've read through these notes. We talk a lot about the box model, and there's a whole bunch of different properties in CSS that we can use to control the, the sizing of things, borders, padding, margin, etc. And um, lots of different layout tools for ways of displaying content and changing the way that it shows up, how to layer things. And to be honest with you, teaching this is very difficult without an example. So what I thought I would do is, I, <clears throat> I think one of the best ways to learn CSS is to take a page that you use all the time, look at it, and challenge yourself to try and recreate that page. So here, here's what I want to try. I, I have, I'm spending a lot of time in YouTube putting up these videos, and so I'm looking a lot at the YouTube uh, search results or the YouTube UI. So I thought, why don't we recreate this page? And using all of the techniques from the notes this week, maybe a few more that I'll talk about as we go, I can, I can make this page look, or I can make a page that looks almost identical to this. And so that's what I want to do right now. I want to start in on this process and walk you through how to do it. So um, I'm going to do this today. I'm going to be working in Firefox. I've got, um, I think it's important, I said earlier that you should switch up the browsers that you're using all the time. So every week, switch browsers and test your pages in all different browsers. Make sure that things look the way that, that you assume that they should in each, in each one of these different browsers. So we're gonna, we're gonna focus on using Firefox today and how the dev tools in Firefox work and they're fantastic. Okay, so let me switch up my view here. And I've got, I've got a, a page down here on the bottom, which is my current, this is my FooTube page. So I'm gonna create, recreate the search results for YouTube. And I assume that if you're watching this and you go to YouTube, you may find that YouTube has changed the way that their search results look. So I want you to see, this is what it looked, this is the page that I'm gonna try and recreate. And if it looks different, then try and make it look the way that it looks when you, uh, when you take a look at this page. Okay. So when you're gonna do CSS layout, what you have to begin with is you have to think about how is this page structured? So really, if you look at this page, we've got across the top, we have a header, and below the header, we have an area that's broken up into two parts. So we have a vertical column that goes down the left-hand side with these navigation elements. And then to the right of that, we have an area where the search results are available. And I don't know if you can see this very well in the video, but this section here has just a, a subtle light gray background color to it. So it's been marked off from the other two sections. So we have a header across the top, nav bar down the left, and then this main area of content. And if I scroll this page, I want you to notice something. You see how the entire page doesn't scroll? So that header across the top and the nav on the left, they aren't scrolling. All that's happening is this inner part here is what is scrolling. So we need to, we need to try and recreate that. So a couple of notes about how we're gonna get the look of this page. And I have challenged myself not to look at the CSS for this page. So previously we looked at how do I use the dev tools to open up a page and see how they built it? And I am not going to look at the CSS. I'm gonna do this all visually. So as a result, my page isn't gonna be pixel perfect. I'm not aiming for it to be 100% identical just because it's gonna, it's gonna be tricky for me to do. Um, and I, that's really not my goal, but I want something that approximates this page. Now, one of the nice things that we have available to us is that Google is using some assets that we can actually use as well. They're open source, they're freely available for us to use. So, and I'll show you what I mean. So the first thing is Google has a whole bunch of icons. 
So you can see all these icons that are everywhere in here for the home, for trending and all of those kinds of things. And I'm actually gonna use the exact same icons that Google uses and they're published as a set of, it's, it's basically, it's CSS. So let me show you how you get this. So Google's design style is called material. Um, so if you use Android or you use lots of Google web pages, they, they have kind of a flat, similar look to them because they all use this mater material style guide. And I'm gonna use the material icons. So the material icons are available and basically what it is, I'll, if I open this up, I'll show you. We've got just a huge set of icons and all of these icons are available in different sizes. You can get them in an outlined form or a filled in form. You can change their color, you know, so this is exactly what we need. Th these are the icons, like for example, see this icon right here? This is the icon that is in the YouTube design. If you look up here, you'll see it's right here when you go to create a new uh, video, this is the icon that they use. So this is wonderful for us. We can use all the same icons that they have when we're, when we're looking at this. And the way that you, <clears throat> excuse me, the way that you get started doing this is you have to include these icons in your page. And there's a whole bunch of ways you can do it, but a simple way is just to include a font, like basically use a web font and they publish this font, the material icons font, and I can grab this link and I can throw this link into our page, like so. And so now my page is gonna have those material icon fonts are gonna get loaded. If we go to the network tab and if I refresh this page, you'll see that the material icons are the second thing that loads. So the page loads, then the material icons load, then my style sheet loads, etc. Okay, so the other thing that Google uses a lot of is they have a font and you can see that it's a sans serif font. So all throughout this design, they're using it and it's called Roboto. So if you go and look up um, Roboto, I'll just show you what it looks like. So this is what, this is what Roboto looks like like this, you've seen it lots and lots of times. So what I'm gonna do is I'm also going to include the Roboto font uh, in my page so that I can make use of it. So I have, the, I have the icons that I need and I have the Roboto font and then I have my own style sheet and then I can start, I can start working away at uh, rebuilding this thing. Okay, so let's, let's get started at this. So the first thing I'm gonna do in my CSS is I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna set my HTML and my body. And because I don't have, I'm gonna start out by not having as much content as, as, um, as they do. I'm just gonna build this first row. I'm not gonna worry about all the other ones. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set the height to be 100% of the available space. I just wanna, I wanna have my content fill the window so that I, uh, everything is, uh, you know, um, taking up as much space as possible for my design. And the other thing I wanna do is I wanna stop this page from scrolling. So you see how the body isn't scrolling? Like there's a part of the page that's scrolling, but this inside part is not scrolling. So out on the outer edges of my page, what I want to do is I want to tell the browser that I want any overflowing content to be hidden. I, I don't want to see it. So in other words, don't put up scroll bars, don't scroll, just cut it off and it's not going to be, it's not going to be visible. So we don't have any, we don't have any content yet, but if you, you know, if I look at the body, you can see that my body basically takes up the entire height of the of the browser here in blue as I hover over it, right? Okay. So now let's do a little bit of work on the body itself. So in the body, if you notice on this YouTube page, almost every one of the fonts is this gray. 
It's uh, it's not black. They do use black. There's black in the title here, but this is gray. This is gray. This is blue. So we'll deal with that later. This is gray. This is gray. Filter is gray. Everything is kind of a gray. So what I'm going to do is at the highest part of my document, I'm going to set a default color and the default color is going to be um, I, I need a gray and I'm terrible at knowing what all these grays are. So whenever I have to do this, I will go and look up, you know, use a tool like this is a tool that just gives some common named uh, named grays. So I'm going to I don't know, I'm going to use maybe this one here, this dim gray. So if I say, let's make this dim gray, and by the way, you don't have to use these named colors. You could go in and you could get a very specific gray by specifying um, the RGB values. And, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try, try this and see how it looks. So I'm gonna set the color. I'm gonna change the font throughout the entire page they're using Roboto. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to set the font family, whoops, to be Roboto. And if Roboto isn't available, whoops, Roboto. And if Roboto isn't available, then just drop to whatever the default sans serif font is. Remember that Roboto is available to us because we included this style sheet from Google Web Fonts. So it's going to download and pull in the Roboto font. It's going to define it. And then over here, Roboto is a font family that is available to me. So I'm going to set this. And the other thing I'm going to do, I don't know if you see, you notice, see how my, my body has extra margin around it. So one of the big topics that we have this week is talking about the box model. So you can see down here in the bottom corner of my dev tools, it has a section for looking at the box model. And what you can see is in the middle inside here, you can see the content. This blue section here is the inside of the element. And then the next layer out, we call the padding. So the padding comes after the content, but before the border. And there may not be a border. Like right now, there is no border on this. So if we have a border, the border would be the next thing that would happen. And then after the border comes the margin. And the margin is what separates this element from an element beside it, above it, below it, whatever it might be. So right now, this thing has eight pixels of extra white space margin all the way around the edge. And what I want to do is I want to collapse that. So I just want to push it all the way out so that it's not going to have that extra space. So whenever I want to do that, I'm going to say that I want to set the margin to zero. Now you're going to see a lot of people do this. They're going to say, um, I want to set it to zero pixels, but I want you to understand that zero pixels is the same as 0% is the same as zero EM is the same as zero REMS is the same, like zero is zero is zero. So whenever you're putting zero in to a CSS uh, rule, you just want to say zero, just drop the units. You don't need them at all. So if I save this now, you'll see that a couple of things have happened. My FooTube title is gray and it's right at the edge at the top, right at the edge at the left. You can see that the body now fills the entire contents, the HTML and the body both fill the, um, the whole page. So that's good. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to start chopping this page up and we've got these three sections and the, the section across the top here is this nav, this nav bar or this header. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some markup in here. I'm going to get rid of this foo tube and I'm going to start with my very first section. So our first section that we need to create is the header. So let's think about this. We need a header. And inside of our header, what do we have? Well, I'm not going to put the logo because logos and so on are trademarks. I, so I'm going to leave this out. But my design is going to have this hamburger menu here. And it's going to have this search area here. And then it's going to have these sort of user buttons over here for uploading content, signing in, setting the options, whatever. So I sort of have three sections. I have a section here, I have a section for the search, and I have a section for these buttons. So 
what I'm gonna do in my header is I'm gonna create three different sections. So the first section, I'll call this, this is the menu section. Second section, I will call this the uh, search wrapper. And you're gonna see people use terms like wrapper a lot when they're working with divs as a way of saying, I, I wanna have a box that's around this content because when you're doing layout, you're gonna need to be able to target an area, not just an element, but a group of elements. And so you wrap a div around it and, you, and that's gonna be your wrapper. And I'm gonna do one last wrapper for this, these buttons over here on the right-hand side. So let's call this div ID equals, um, uh, what is this, user options, let's say. These are the user options that are available to us. And right now, nothing shows up, but I have inside my header, I have these, I have these sections, I have these three sections. Okay. So let's do the very first one. So let me talk to you about how you use these material icons. So if I scroll down here, essentially this is, last time we did, um, we used Font Awesome and Font Awesome is similar, but a little bit different in the way that this works. If you wanna put an icon up here, what you do is you, you, you say, okay, I wanna, I wanna use the I element. It doesn't stand for icon, but it has come to mean icon. People tend to use it when they wanna have an icon placed in, the, in a page. And so when you're using an icon font like this, this is what they'll do. So I wanna have an icon. The class of this icon is equal to material icons like so, and then what you do is you put in whatever the name of the icon is that you want, and how do you know which one you want? Well, you have to go, let me go back to the top here and show you. So if I, I'll just leave this open in another tab. If you needed an icon of a face, you would search for faces and you would get back all these different op options, and so one of them is called face. So here I could say face, and if I were to, reload this, you can see that now instead of having the letter X or something, I have a face. So that font has automatically converted what I just put here into, um, you know, into whatever icon that I need. Okay, so think about what we need. We need something that represents um, a menu. So if I type menu, you can see there's one actually called menu right here. So let's just use menu. So if I say menu, like so, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get my menu over here on the left, which is, which is what we're after. So let me get this lined up again. So I've got a menu just like they have a menu. It's not set in the right position yet, but we'll come back to that. Okay, so what else do we need? Skipping the logo, I need to make this section here. So what do we have? Well, we've got a place to type text, which is called an input element, and we're gonna spend time in a couple weeks talking about forms and input elements. But for right now, let's throw a, uh, an input element in here. So I'm gonna put in an input element, and just to make it look the way that this one does, this has the text nature typed into it. So I'm gonna set the value of this to be nature and an input element is a self-closing element, and so it's empty, it doesn't have any content afterwards, so you just put it on value. And then the next thing they have is they have this button. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, put, a, um, I'm gonna put a button here, and you'll notice that the button doesn't have any text. What it has is it has a, um, it has the search uh, magnifying glass. So what we need is we need another one of these icons. So I'm gonna say I class equals material uh, icons. And then I need, you know, if we go looking over here, I need some kind of a, like I need to do a search. Um, okay, yeah, so they have one here called search. So if I do search, then let's see how it looks. Okay, it looks terrible, <laughs> which welcome to HTML and forms, but we're gonna fix that, so don't panic. So we've got our menu, we've got our input box and the uh, button that we're gonna work with. 
And now we just need to do these over here. We've got to do a bunch more icons. So let's do those. So I'm going to come down and um, inside my user options, I'm going to put in three more icons. And if you'll forgive me, I'm going to just copy and paste and let's change this up. So the first one, just to save some time, I looked these up before. So this one is called a video call. The second one is called apps. And the third one is called more vertical. So if I save this, you can see that I now have these three buttons, same as these three buttons. Again, we haven't got the layout right, but we're getting the markup. We're just doing the content. Now then the last thing in this row is this sign in button. So we need to do, we need to do the same thing here. We need to throw a, uh, a button and I'm going to need to do a bunch of CSS on this button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it an ID so that I can easily um, write a selector. So this button inside the button, I need to do two things. I need to put this icon, which is a, like a user icon. So let's do another, um, let's do another icon. Only this one is called account underscore circle. And then beside that, I want a space and then I want sign in and then I'll close my button. Okay. What do you think of that? Beautiful, right? Okay. Uh, bear with me. So now we have this uh, sign in button. Okay. So let's solve our first problem, which is, which is a layout problem. So we need to make some changes to the way that our header works, all right? So, all right, let's take a look at this header. So I need to put some space on the left and the right of the header. So in my CSS, I'm going to um, target my header and I'm going to say that I want the margin on the right to be, I don't know, like 15 pixels and margin, uh, margin on the left, I don't think I'm going to do yet. Um, so let's come back to that. I also want to push it down from the top. You can see how there's a little bit of space at the top and mine has almost no space at the top. So I'm going to say margin at the top. Let's do another, say 15 pixels like so. So we've, we've just pushed things down slightly and there's a little bit of room. Here's my header. I have a little bit of room on the right so that it's not gonna go all the way to the edge of the page. So that, that's pretty good. Now, I don't like the way that this content is being laid out. So take a look at the markup. What we have here is we have inside our header, we have one, two, three divs, right? So we have three elements inside of the header. And we know that a div is a block level element. So this block level element is going to get its own vertical space. It's everything else is going to get pushed down below it. And so you can see this happening three times. One, two, three. What I want to do is I want to take these divs and I want them to go to the right. So instead of being pushed down, I want them to go over. And I also want to take advantage of, you see, if I start dragging this, do you see what's happening with this text box? So the menu on the left stays the same. The buttons are moving over, but this thing is growing. So I need to be able to have this stay the same, this stay the same, but in the middle, I want it to shrink or grow depending on the situation with the window. So in order to do this, there's a number of techniques we can use in CSS. And the one that I'm going to talk about a lot today is something called Flexbox. So what I need is I need the browser to manage the space for me. I can't say exactly how wide I want this to be because it depends. If you're on a mobile phone, it's going to be different than if you're on a really wide 4K monitor. So I'm going to use Flexbox as a way of asking the browser to figure this problem out for me. So what I have, if you look at my markup, I have a parent element. The header is the parent. 
And then inside the parent, I have one, two, three children. So I need the browser to manage the available width between these three children. So I'm gonna specify in my styles that I want the, um, I want the header to display its children using flex. I want it to, I want it to use flex. So when I save that, you can see that already it's made a change. So this flex container here, it's now putting those divs beside each other instead of what it was doing a second ago. Now, another thing that I want to do, let me show you. Um, justify content um, here, this one might work. Okay, take a look at this diagram. So I want the browser to automatically manage the space that's available to me inside of this header. And I can tell the browser exactly how I want it to place the item. So this is what we have right now. We have three items. And if you look at our page, you can see that our items are all jammed up to the left. So what's happening here is the browser is using exactly the amount of width that it needs in order to display each one of these divs. Like if I hover over the menu, the menu is exactly as wide as it needs to be for its contents and no wider. The search is exactly as wide as it needs to be and no wider. And the same thing with the third one. And then we have all this extra white space. So what we can do is we can ask the browser to modify the way that it lays out the items relative to the available empty space inside of the parent. And we call this justifying the contents. And a, a way to think about this is if you were writing a, a, a document in Microsoft Word and you were left aligning your text, you would have a jagged edge on the right because all of the space on the right would be, that's where it would go. But if you fully justified your content, what would happen is it would spread the white space out so that everything would look, you know, would look like it, it, it fit perfectly. So I'm going to ask my Flexbox parent to justify its content. And I have all of these different options. Um, I'm going to use the third one or the whatever this is, the fourth one space between. Like so. And when, I, and when I do that, you can see that this is much closer to what YouTube is doing. So I've got the menu, then I've got white space, then I've got my search, then I've got these things over here. So this is, this is a lot better than what we just had a second ago. And the trick was we needed, to, we needed to group all of these elements inside of a parent. It could be anything. It could be a div, it could be a header, it could be a main, it doesn't matter. And then we need to say, we want to lay out all of the children inside here using the Flexbox algorithm. So we have more control over how white space, it, it, it's like a rubber band. It's going to deal with all of the extra space for you. And then we want you to put the extra space in between the elements, put the space in between everything instead of jamming them all one next to the other. Okay, so far so good. Now let's work on this um, menu. You can see how this menu is punched over to the right. So what we need to do is I'm gonna ask that the menu div, I want its width to be wider. So I want, I don't know what that is, 75 pixels is my guess. So I want it to be wider and I want the text inside this to be centered. And you're like, what, what text are you talking about? Well, remember what we did in our markup. This is actually a font. This is a font that's being displayed using the material icons. So I'm going to say the width of the menu is now 75. Like, do you see how wide this is? It's quite wide, but the contents are being pushed all the way to the left hand side. And what I want to do is move it over to the right. So if I say that I want to center the contents, you can see that now this menu is in the center of this, in the center of this div. 
And that's, I think, what they're doing here, too, to line it all up down the vertically like this. Okay, let's move on to this next section here. This one is our search, our search box area. So we got a bunch of stuff we need to do here. So this is our search wrapper. And our search wrapper, I want to do the same thing again. Now, this is an interesting thing with Flexbox and CSS layout is that you can use these layout techniques deep, 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 deep inside of your document and you can lay out each section. So when you're thinking about a layout, ignore the rest of the page and just think about how you want this to work. So remember, if I grab this edge and I drag it, look what's happening to that search box. The button doesn't get any wider, but what happens to this? It grows to fill the available space. So this is a good example of Flexbox here where I want the contents, I want this box, this input box, to flex and fill the space, and I want this button to stay at its prescribed size. I don't want it to change. So let's, let's figure this out. So what I'm gonna do, anytime you want the contents to use Flexbox, you have to define it. So you're going to say that I want to display the contents of this div using the Flexbox algorithm. Now, I also, um, I also want to, you know, going back here for a second, I want to change the way that the white space works. So I want the, uh, imagine what we have here is we have like the, we have the, the input and we have the button. I want them to be centered in the div. So I'm gonna ask that the contents of this search wrapper, I want to justify the contents such that they are centered, okay? Already it's looking better. Now, what else do we need to do here? Um, oh, I know. We need, we need to make this so that it can grow. So the problem that we have right now is, let me show you this search wrapper. This is the search wrapper right here. So the way that the DOM works with CSS is that the default width, the default width for an element is the size of its contents. So if you put contents into a div and those contents are 50, 100, 150 pixels wide, that's how wide the containing div is going to be. So in our case, this thing is only ever as wide as these two elements. But that's not what I want, because remember that I am within the header, and the header is aligned with Flexbox. Can you see in my inspector here how it put the word flex beside each one of these? So you can see that all of the elements that are using Flexbox are going to get decorated with this extra little indicator. This is in Firefox's DevTools. So what I want is I want the menu to stay the same size. I want these buttons to stay the same size roughly, but I want this to grow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I am displaying the contents of the header, the children using Flexbox, and I want to flex this. I want to flex this item so that it fills the available space. Okay, I want it to um, I want it to grow. So it's not going to grow yet until I make some more changes. But this is the setup that I need. All right. So let's go further. So if you look at what's going on inside of this search wrapper, we have an input and we have this button. We have to style both of these things. So let's do that. So inside of our search wrapper. So I could just say input because I only have one of them in the page. But if I want to be more specific, I could say the search wrapper, there is a child inside of the search wrapper, which is an input. So that's how I can grab, I can use this contextual selector to say I want to combine these two things together. So I want this input element, which is inside of a Flexbox container, 
inside the search wrapper, I want it to grow. I want it to flex. I'm not gonna give it a width. I'm gonna say, let it grow as much as it wants to a maximum of let's say 500 pixels. So I don't want it to grow forever because it's gonna become ridiculous, but I do want it to be able to grow. So when I make that change, you can see that what's happening now is that if I, if I take this window and I move this window, let me just change this here. If I move this window, you can see what's happening. It's growing, but only to 500 pixels. It won't get any bigger than that. If I go less than that, it'll go smaller. If I go more, 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 you can see that eventually it stops growing and the browser is modifying the white space in between these elements for me. Okay. Now let's make some other changes. This YouTube um, page, the height I think is not the same as mine. So I'm going to make this a bit bigger. So let's change the height of this to, I don't know, 27 pixels. Let's change um, the text color looks black to me. It's not gray. Let me get rid of the inspector here. So this will be uh, black. Um, what else can we change? Um, the font size. Let's change this. Let's make this a bit bigger. That looks pretty good. Now you notice that there's a bunch of extra space on the left between the, between the content and the border. And you see how we don't have as much of that. So if I wanna put extra space on the left of the content, what I need to do is I need to put it between the content and the border. I need to put it on the left padding. So here what I could do is I could say padding left is equal to something like 10 pixels. And that pushes it in. You can see it pushes it into the right. Um, we could cap this, we could make this even smaller. Like if I said 200, that's too small, 300, that's maybe too big. Well, let's say 300 pixels, is, that's not too bad. Because I don't have this logo here, I have this extra space, which is fine. And their border, these are pretty close. I don't know, we could, we could try and define the border. We could say that the border is one pixel in width. It's a solid line. And we could say, let's use like a light, light gray color, um, which those look close to me. Okay, and now let's try and do something with this button. So same deal, search wrapper button. And what can we do with the button? So first of all, um, let's play with the amount of space to the left and the right of this. So you can see how there's a lot of different space. Also the size of this and the color are no good. So let's, let's, change, let's change a bunch of that. So first of all, let's change the color so that it uses this same dim gray that we're using everywhere else. And let's change, um, let's change, let's change the, I'm just trying to think. Well, okay, let's do the padding. So the padding on the left, let's try, I don't know, 20 pixels. 
And padding on the right, let's try 20 pixels, like so. That looks pretty good. Now, one thing that isn't working well here is that this is um, too big. And there's a note in the material icons. They say, if you wanna change the sizes of these, here's what you do. So if you wanna use different sizes, they're recommending that you define some other classes for specifying different sizes. So they're just changing the font size, which we could do either in a separate class or we could also just do it right here. So if I said font size, um, I don't know what, what would make the most sense for for the, for the search, like it, it, by default, I think they're 24. So what if we drop this down to like 18 pixels? How does that look? If we go here, we go here, font size. Did that even work? No, I can't do it this way. So let's not do it this way. Let's just follow their instructions. So I'm gonna grab these rules and I'm gonna throw these rules up here. So 18 pixels. Okay, so if I were to change this to be, um, I'm gonna add another class. I'm gonna say MD18 here. Yeah, and that now it goes down, goes down smaller. Okay, so if we look at this button, this, this button, um, color of the font, the padding, um, mm -hmm. I wonder if we, light gray, one thing I don't like about the way that this button is showing up is its borders. The borders on this, let's have a look here. It has like a three-dimensional look to it. So what if we change the borders to be one pixel solid and light gray? That looks better. Um, There's also, you can see how their corners are rounded and ours are not, which is interesting. So if we were to say, um, <clears throat> we could change the border radius. We could uh, make it, I don't know, like three pixels. Yeah, but then it's going to go on this edge of the button too. So I'm not going to do that for for the moment. What we would have to do is maybe on put the border on the search wrapper. Like, let's just see. If I put a border on here, one pixel solid, let's make it red, which we won't keep. But you'll see, yeah, this is gonna get this is gonna get more complicated than I want to do. So here's an example of something where I'm not gonna get too finicky about this. I'm gonna keep it. This is pretty close. I I actually think we could go a little bit wider. So maybe these need to be 25 and 25 pixels. Whoops. That might be that might be closer. Or 23, I don't know. We're splitting here, so it's at, at a certain point. That looks pretty close. So if we move this, it's doing it's doing what we want it to do, which is good. Okay, so let's carry on. Let's keep moving. So the next bit is this. Um, 
this section right here, these these things here, which is the um, user options. <clears throat> so once again, I want to display these using Flexbox because I want to spread out the, I want the browser to manage the space for me. So I'm going to display Flex. And I'm going to specify that I want to, I want to, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to space, it doesn't have an example of this, but I want to space everything out evenly. Let me show you what it would look like. So I'm going to distribute the space evenly amongst all of them. So I'm going to justify the contents and I'm going to space it evenly. And, um, Okay, so now we can start changing the, the amount of space that each one of these takes. Because remember that what's gonna happen is each one of these things is going to occupy just enough space, the bare minimum amount of space in order for, for the, um, in order for the contents to show. So what I wanna do is I wanna target all of these three icons, but I don't wanna mess with this one. So I've got inside user options, I have three these three icons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a rule that says, I want to style the user options, and I could just say I, but that would mean that there's an I inside. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna say that there is an I which is direct, like that is a direct child of it. And you'll notice that over here, this I is not a direct child of user options because it's inside button. So it has a different parent element. So this says, give me all of the I elements inside that are directly inside of um, user options. And what I wanna do is I wanna bump out the margins on each side of these. So right now you can see if I inspect this one, Um, you'll see that the margin is right now it's zero. And what I want to do is I want to make those, let's, I don't know, let's say 12. So I'm going to put a margin on the left of 12 pixels and a margin on the right of 12 pixels like this. And I'll space those out. And I don't know if that's right or if it needs to be more than that. We could 13, 13. I don't know. You could play with this. 15 might be too much. It's close. So I now have this element here. You can see that the content is this wide, but then the margins go wider. And the margins push over to the margin of the content that's on the left-hand side of it. And the browser is going to flexibly display all of these elements. And it's gonna put the space evenly between those elements on all of them, on all of these. So I've got a lot of flex box going on here. I've got the whole header is a flex box. This search area is a flex box. These, this is another flex box. I'm using it over and over and over again to make this stuff work. Okay, we got one more thing to do and that's this sign in button. So our sign in button, I'm gonna do it by ID and I'm gonna change the color to, I don't know what blue they're using there, but I'll just use a, I'll use a blue and I'm gonna set the border to be the same blue, one pixel solid of the same, um, same blue. And I'm gonna change the background color from this gray to white. So I'm gonna say that the background color is white. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that's pretty good. It's not the identical blue, so there's no way that I'm gonna guess what this blue is, so you're gonna have to just be happy with my <laughs> happy with my blue. And if you're better at this than me, you could figure out what it is. If I looked at their CSS, we could tell exactly what it is, but I'm gonna try not to do that. All right, now this button, you can see there's quite a bit of space on the left and the right on the inside of the border. So that's padding. So the padding on the inside needs to increase and actually the padding needs to increase a little bit for the, other, for the top and bottom too. So I'm gonna set the padding. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that I want the top and the bottom. So I could say padding top, padding bottom, padding left, padding right, but because I'm gonna do all of them, 
and I want the top and bottom to be the same and the left and the right to be the same, I'm going to say that I want the top and the bottom to be, say, six pixels. And then I want the left and the right to be 15 pixels, like so. So if the top and the bottom are the same and the left and the right are the same, you can just give these two, you can give this shortcut. So you could have said, so the ways you can do this, you could say six pixels on the top, 15 pixels on the right, six pixels on the bottom, 15 pixels on the left. And the way that it works is it's like a clock. It goes to the top, it goes to, and then it goes around the clock, clockwise around. But if you're gonna do them and they're gonna be the same, like the top and the bottom are the same and the left and the right are the same, you can just chop it down to this and have it only, uh, you, you don't have to put so many in there. So let's try bumping that out, that looks good. But you can see that my, my font size is not right. Sign in is not right. So we need to, um, we need to make that font larger, I guess. I'm surprised it's so small. Okay, so let's, let's make it a bit bigger. Font size, if I make it 1 EM, it's gonna to be too big. So let's make it 0.7 EM, too small, 0.8 EM. And it looks like almost like it's bold. Font weight, bold. It's maybe too much. I don't know if it's like font weight 600. That might be, that's probably close. Okay, and we need to fix up, you see how this, this icon and this text, they just, they're not using the same baseline. So they're not vertically aligned the same with each other. So I need to, I need to get this um, icon to use a different vertical alignment. I need it to drop down so it matches the text. So I'm gonna say that I want the sign in I, I want the I want the I inside the sign in button. I want it to use a vertical alignment where it's lined up in the middle so that these things you, so that the text and everything lines up in the midpoint. And you can you can change this around like vertical alignment, you could put it to the top, you could put it to the bottom. You know, if I said bottom it would push it so you can see how this is now down at the bottom instead, or you could say at the top and it'll push it up so that it's lined up at the top. But if we say in the middle, it's probably gonna do what your eye wants it to do. Like that. Okay, so we're almost there, except we've messed up this button has the wrong height. Its height is 36, so let's change that. So this button, height should be, I don't know what, 30? No, 31, there. Okay, so there's the header. The header part of this is done, and we can go down and do the uh, the bottom parts of it here, the left and the right. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need some markup to make the next the next part of this work. So if you think about this, what we have now is we have a section here, this main section. And what we want to do is we, well, let's just do that. Let's just say that after our header, we're going to have a, um, a main div, a main element. And inside the main element, we have two things. We have a thing on the left with a bunch of um, navigation icons, and then we have a thing on the right, which is all of our content. So let's, let's do something like that. Let's say that on the left, we have a nav, and on the right, we have a, let's just call it a section, and inside the section, 
well, we'll come back to this section. This will be our main our main content, and we could we could start with this. All right. So what we're gonna do with our with our main is I first of all I want the main to stretch all the way down to the bottom. So I'm gonna say here that I want my main to have a height of 100% so that it fills the available space. And I also want to lay out the contents of main using Flexbox because look at what we have to do here. When I move the browser, like so, I need for this part of the page to grow or to shrink and I want this part to be static and just stay what, like it is. So in order to achieve this, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, say that I want to display the children of this using the Flexbox algorithm. And then the first one we need to deal with is we need to deal with um, our nav. Let's do nav first. So the nav, let's give it a width that we said that this was 75 pixels, let's do 75 pixels. So it's gonna have a hard coded width. And let's let's put in some icons here for for um, all the parts on the left, everything that we need over here. So the way that I'm gonna do um, the way that I'm gonna do these is each one of these icons I'm gonna wrap in a div, and then inside there I'm gonna have two things. I'm gonna have an icon class equals material icons and then we have to put in whatever the icon is that we need to use and then basically below that I want to have a piece of text so I'm just going to use a paragraph element and I'm going to put in the text so I'm going to have one two three four five of those so I'm going to grab this and I'm just going to paste it uh, two three four five of them and I'll, I won't go and do all the searching right now, but I know that this one is called home and the text is home. This one is called local fire department and the text is trending. This one is subscriptions and Descriptions. This one is video library and library. And then the last one here is uh, history and history. So there's what we have right now. We've got all of our icons going down the left hand side. They're not styled properly, but they have the right color. The text is too large, but you can see that everything's being laid out essentially the way we want it to be laid out. And our structure is we have a main, then a nav, then a div, 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 div. And um, let's, let's play with the styling on this. So you notice how they are centering everything in here. So we're gonna do the same trick. So what I want to do is in every one of my, uh, my main nav divs, in all of those divs, I want to align the text in the center. So you can see how everything snaps over, so now it's centered. I want the font size to be smaller. So this looks pretty small to me, like maybe, I don't know, 10 pixels. Yeah. 10 pixels is probably about right. And they've got more space above and below this than I do. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a margin on the top of say 25 pixels and a margin on the bottom of 25 pixels. So there'd be like 50 pixels in between each one of these things to push them down. And that looks, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty close except that I wanna move my text a little bit closer to the icon. So if you notice, if I look at this, this, um, 
This has a margin currently of 10 pixels. You can see down here, there's a 10 pixel margin on it, like so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, for my main nav divs, for all the paragraph elements in those, I want to set the margin to be less. I want it to be five pixels instead of 10 pixels. And then these things sort of, they get closer. So that looks pretty, looks pretty good. Um, okay. All right, we have one last section we have to do here. We gotta do all of this. So I want you to notice a few things. First thing is, if I make this wider, you'll see that this, okay, we have to make the background a different color. We have to make this scrollable. Notice how all their content gets cut off about here. And then this is all extra space. So that means that inside of this section here, we need another div which has a lesser width than the rest of the content that it's, it's inside of. And then we need to build out our card. So let's start with getting this, the, the backing for this. Okay, so we have a main section. So a section is inside main. And I want it to use as much of the available space as possible. I want to use flex one, meaning I'm not going to give it a width. I just want it to, to fill the available space. I want it to take all of the available height. I want to change its background color. Let me get my page up here. Change the background color to some kind of a gray. Uh, and again, I had to look this up. I don't have uh, hex values in my head. Um, so I have a sort of a light gray off-white color. And I don't know how well you can see this. If I highlight it, you might get a better chance at it. So there it is right there. So you can see that it's it's too tight to the header. So what we need to do is we need to put some space between it and the rest of it. So let's put a margin on the top that's maybe 10 pixels. And uh, let me get rid of this. So now it's pushed down a little bit. So we have about 10 pixels down on the outside. And it looks, if you'll notice, all their content is bumped in on the, it's like on the inside, there's about 20 pixels or so of extra space. So let's put some padding of 20 pixels on the inside of this thing. And the last thing I wanna do is I wanna override this overflow. So we have so far told the browser that we don't want any overflow. We don't want scroll bars. We don't want any of this to happen. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to override that here. And I'm going to say that I want to, I want the overflow to be automatic, meaning put up a scroll bar if it's necessary. And if it's not necessary, don't put a scroll bar. So you'll notice how there's no scroll bar right now, but in a little while we're, we'll be able to, to, to get that. We'll have access to it. And let's just have a look. This, this has a margin on the right of five. It's not going all the way to the edge of the page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of that. Margin on the right, make it zero so that it pushes it out. Um, this main section has a margin on the right of zero now. So there's a little bit of space at the top, but on the right, it has nothing. Okay, so what do we have over here? We've got a section. Now inside of this section, let's, let's make a little bit of content. So inside here, I'm gonna put a div and I'm gonna say that this is my content div. And the reason for this is that I want, I want to be able to cut it off. I wanna have an area where all of the actual content goes. And the first thing that I'll put inside here is this area where it says filter. So there's an icon, filter, and then a border at the bottom. So I'm just gonna use a paragraph and I'll say this is my ID equals filter. And inside this paragraph, I'm gonna first of all put this icon right here, which again, I'm lucky because I can get this out of the material icons. 
and this is called tune. And then I'll put the word filter like that. So we have another baseline problem that we need to fix, but and the font size isn't quite right and we need a line, but we have the general concept here. So let's 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 style this. Let's style our content and uh, and filter. So our content div, I want its width to get capped at say, I don't know, something like 650 pixels. So as the, as the thing gets wider, it'll stop growing at a certain point and it won't go any further. And this won't, we can't really see it yet until we make some more changes. Let's change our filter so that it uses a smaller font size. I don't know what font size, I don't know, 0.6 EM is probably too small, yeah. 0.8EM, that might be right. 9EM is probably, no, maybe that's it. Um, let's change the, um, it's down too far. Like if you look at this, let's inspect this. It's got a huge, it's got a, a margin on the top of 10 pixels, which is pushing it too far down. So let's let's get rid of that. So I'm gonna say margin on the top of zero. So it pushes it up higher. And let's um, let's put a uh, let's put a border on the bottom. So we want a border, but only on the bottom. We want it to be one pixel solid and then use like this light gray color, I guess, that we've been using. And you notice how our border and their border, like there's more space between the content and the border. So we can do the same thing by saying that we have padding on the bottom. So padding is between the content and the border. We have a padding on the bottom of say 10 pixels. So we push that down like so. So that's good, except for, again, the vertical alignment on the, um, on the icon is no good. So my icon inside of the filter element, I need the vertical alignment to be in the middle, like that. And actually, there's one last thing we should do. You see how, See how their text, there's a bit more space on the left? A bit more space on the left. We can fix that here. So we could put some padding on the left. Um, oh, no, wait a second. Let me think about this. Here, we would probably need to say, let's put some, put a margin on the right of, I don't know, five pixels. What does that do? Yeah, pushes it out. That's not bad. I think this is... That might be it. Okay, so we're down to the last, the last piece. And the last piece is I need to make these rows of of data where I've got uh, I've got an image, I've got some I've got a title, I've got some metadata about who uploaded it, how many views it has, and I've got some text about what's going on here. So we need to make this this thing here. So let's do some more markup. So I'm going to this thing this thing here that we're looking at, it on the web they often call these things cards. So a card is something where you have an image and a bunch of text, like a store has cards. This is a, a really common pattern that you're gonna see people using. Okay, so let's, let's, write, let's write some HTML for this. Um, what we need here is we need a div that holds the entire thing. So this whole thing here needs to be a div. 
So I'm gonna call, I'm gonna give this thing a class. And the reason I'm gonna use a class and not an ID is because I'm gonna have many of them. So I'm gonna repeat this over and over and over again, not just once. So I'm gonna say class equals, and let's call this a uh, video card wrapper. So this is the div that goes around the entire, the entire thing. Then inside that, I have two pieces. So look at what happens here. If I make this thing wider, see how the, the image doesn't change, but this part changes. So this is another use of Flexbox. So this thing keeps growing up to a maximum and then it stops. And you can see that it doesn't grow anymore. So we need to try and duplicate that. So I wanna have a div that holds my image and so on, and then another div for all of this stuff here. So let's do that. Let's make a div class equals video card image. So this is where the image will go. And then div uh, class equals video card. And this is where all the information in the card's gonna go. Okay, so let's try and make this work. So I, I needed an image that I could use. So I went and did a search. I wanted an image that looked kind of like this, but was free. So I went to Unsplash and I found this image right here, which is, you know, pretty good. And I downloaded a wide version of it. And then I reduced the image down so that it's smaller. Because if you, if you notice, we only need this thing to be this big, right? So there's no point having this massive two megabyte, five megabyte file. So in my files, I have, I have this image and it's, you know, it's only 10 kilobytes and it's, you know, pretty small. This is, this is the image. So I want to include this image um, in my video card. So what I'm gonna do in the image section, I'm gonna say that there's an image. Um, the alt is, you know, nature video. <clears throat> source equals, and I'm gonna pick my, pick my image, and I'm gonna give it a height of, um, I don't know, something small, like 100 and, 137, like that. So here I now have, I have this. And the image I chose, this one is a wider aspect ratio than mine, so it's not gonna be identical, but I don't, I don't care. Uh, the, the idea is the same. If I change the height of this, I could make this taller. You know, I could say make it 150 and it'll keep getting wider. So 150, 160. So if I did something like that, so you can see that the browser is um, using the aspect ratio to make this work. So let's say, okay, let's do 160 as an example. And the other thing that I need to do is I need to put this text in. You see how there's some text here? This is the amount of time that is being, uh, how long the video is. So I need to do the same thing. So I'm going to throw a paragraph in here and I'm going to say 30009 like that. Now, this is not going to look right. That's how it looks right now. I'm going to show you how to do this in a second. So... Let's, let's put the last bits of information over into our, our, our card here. So what do we have? We have like a title. So let's use an H2 element. And so I'm just gonna copy all this text. Can I do that? Yes. No, that's not what I want. I want to copy all of... <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just, I have it. I'll do it this way, I'll cheat. Like that. Uh, this doesn't, I need to add some let me just fix my, my content needs. Um, 
I can't scroll down enough because I need more padding at the bottom of this thing. So let me just throw some extra padding, padding on the bottom. Okay, so here's what it looks like right now. So I need to get this part of my, so remember what I have here, I have a wrapper and inside the wrapper, I have two children. I have the image and the card info, those two, those two divs. So I wanna put them beside each other. So what I'm gonna do again is I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use Flexbox. So let's start, let's start changing this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say my video card wrapper class. I want it to display its contents using Flex. I wanna make the height of this equal to, what did we say, 160? Yeah, let's make it the same height as, as we're going for for our images. So let's say the height is 160 pixels and let's put a margin at the bottom between this one and the next one, which is, I don't know, margin bottom of something like, I don't know, 18 pixels, something like that. Okay, so now that's getting better. So now it's laying these two sections out. Okay, now let's talk about how you do this text um, with, the, with the time on top of the image. So in the notes this week, it talks about using different position rules, position absolute, position relative, and so on. And here's, here's the concept of what I need to do. Right now, the image gets placed, and then below the image, this paragraph gets placed. What I need to do is I need to place this paragraph relative to this box here. So I wanna put it on top of it, and I literally want to put it on top of it. I want to put it in front of it. I want to use a Z index to push this thing forward. So I have to make a couple of changes. So again, here's the markup. So for our image, the image has a div and then inside the div is where the image goes and then there's a paragraph element. So this, this video card image, I have to tell the browser the video card image, I have to tell it to use position relative so that inside it, I can change the way that things work. So let me just show you what I mean. Video card image, I wanna target the, the P image inside of this thing. So this paragraph element, instead of it, using the normal flow of the browser. And the normal flow is that a block level element gets like pushes the next content down a line and then that element gets displayed. So the paragraph gets displayed. I wanna change its positioning so that it gets put on top. So I'm gonna say position absolute. So I wanna give absolute positions relative to the parent. So this is a hard concept the first time you do it. I have a div, which is the parent div. I want the positioning of this paragraph element within this div. I want it to be absolute within the confines of this div. So this div, imagine the div is exactly the size of this image. And what I want it to do is I want the paragraph to be positioned inside it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say, because I've done absolute positioning, I can position this thing relative to the bottom, left, top, and right of this div. So I'm gonna say that I want the bottom of this thing to be, I want it to be just up from the bottom. I'm gonna say three pixels. Three pixels up from the bottom, and I want it to be positioned over from the right three pixels. So you see how this thing is up three pixels from the bottom and over three pixels from the bottom, from the right? I wanna do the same thing. So you can see that this has now jumped over like this. Now let's make some more changes. I'm going to, let's change the, um, let's, let's get rid of the margins because they're messing up our placement. Let's 
let's change the background color to black. Let's change the font color to white. And I want to, I w I'm gonna push this thing up. I'm gonna set a Z index on this of 100. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask it to, to be like, to tell it, to force it to be uh, in front of the other content. And it's too big. So let's drop the font size down to something smaller. I don't know, maybe it's a little bit bigger than the font on the other side over there, say 11. That's maybe too small, 12 pixels. Um, that might even be too small, 13 pixels, something like that. But do you notice how the numbers and the black, there's more space up here, like, so it's it's pushed out and pushed up. So we need to do the same thing. So what we can do is we can say that we want to have a, uh, a padding of at the top and bottom of, I don't know, one pixel and on the left and right of say two pixels. That's probably, you know what, it might even need more three pixels. Yeah. Now, I don't know how well you can see this, but it looks to me like this corner has just been rounded off slightly. So let's let's adjust that. Let's set a border radius of something like two pixels to just chop off the hard corner. I could maybe even go bigger, three pixels. I think this is too big. something like that. That's not bad. Okay. Let's do, let's do all of the, um, all of this part. So what do we have to do here? We need to, well, let's target our dot video card info let's okay so we want to flex this thing one so it's contained within this flex box i want it to flex one and i want to put a little bit of space on the left so margin left i don't know 10 pixels 15 pixels i don't know something like that Okay, now let's change all of the H2 and the rest of the bits that are in here. So let's do um, video card info H2, and I have to do the same thing for H3. H3, so I have an H2 and an H3 that I have to work on, and I also need to do it for the paragraph. So I've got to do three sets of rules here. Okay, so for the H2, this looks like black text to me. So let's change the color to black. Let's change the font size to be, I don't know, 1.1 EM, too small, 2 EM, something like that. Um, let's do, let me look at this. Font. So the, the font weight is too much. It needs to see how the, like, it needs to be less like font weight 400 maybe. So it's not so bold. I think it's, I don't know, that's close. Um, let's do this one. So this needs to be black, um, H3 needs to be a smaller font size than the one above. So font size of, um, I don't know, 0.8. Let's 
there's way too much margin here. You can see all, like if I inspect this element, see how there's a huge margin, the yellow, the, the yellow on the top and bottom. So let's, let's clear that margin. And then let's, um, let's clear the margin on this one too, because it's way too big. So we'll get rid of those margins. And let's set a margin on the top of, I don't know, like three pixels. So there's like, there's just a little bit of space between these. This here is way too big. Let's see if I, let me fix this paragraph here for, before I do anything else. So this font size needs to get dropped down to font size of 0.8 EM. That's pretty good. So this shouldn't be bold. So that, get rid of the bold on that. And I've got this huge icon here. So when I, the way that this is happening here, I've got a material design icon and I need the font size to be like 13, which I don't think I have defined. So let's just define that. I need a 13 point, 13 point font size. Whoops. 13 point font size like that. Okay, so let's, that looks good. I think, let's see how this works. If I make this wider, you can see if I make this one wider, when does it stop? It stops a little bit more. So I would say mine, my max width is too much, or it needs to be further. So the max width on my content is set to 650. What if I make it like 850? Yeah, that's pretty close. 875, something like that. So now as I'm going back to the left, it's collapsing this as I go to the right comes forward. That's really good. Now, just for the effect, I'm going to copy and paste this video card multiple times. Um, I'll just do a bunch of them so that now we have a page that looks more like the YouTube results. So you can see that the only part of my page that's scrolling is this content part here and these other parts are fixed. And if I move, if I change this down, everything is shrinking with these flexible widths. And this, and let's put these beside each other and see how they do. So we got this one and we've got, let me make them the same. Yeah, that's about the same. Put this down here like so and get rid of this. That's pretty close. We could probably play with it more. I've, I, I, I was hoping I could do this in an hour and a half and it's an hour and 28. So that's pretty good um, to be able to take the ideas from this week and to be able to use them to build, you know, an interface that's fairly complex, but you know, the amount of code that it took us in terms of CSS, we did it in like 150 lines of CSS to make that work. Um, the HTML isn't, it's only big because I'm starting to copy and paste the same thing over and over again, but it's, uh, It's impressive what you can do with CSS and with these rules if you're if you're willing to sit with them. Now I've gone through this fairly quickly because 
I built it previous to this and now I'm walking you through how to do it. When I sat down to do this, it took me, it would have taken me twice as long easily to do this because I had to figure things out as I was going. And I didn't look at their styles. If I had looked at their styles, it would have been a lot easier. But I would challenge you to try and do this on certain pages. Even if you can't build the whole page, go to a website that you use and try and build the header or try and build one of these cards or try and build the menu of links. And even if it's not perfect, just see if you can get some of the layout ideas to work here. We're using Flexbox for a lot of this and I would highly recommend that you learn about working with Flexbox. There's more that we could do with it, but this was a good, um, a good place to begin and this is a good place to pause. So I'll stop there and I'll let you work through this code, which I'll put up on GitHub for you to try on your own.